Hello. Welcome to this late morning challenge. <clears throat> I thought I'd be cutting the grass right now, but it's pouring down rain. It's been raining. It rained all yesterday. I couldn't edge the yard. I was going to say, well, I'll just edge it and cut it on the same day. Sometimes I like to edge it beforehand. It makes it easier. I, I probably won't be able to do anything today. It's just going to be high grass. Irritating. But yeah, it's not your problem. Um, then the internet was down for three hours. I thought it was some of my equipment at first. I said something's broken. I'm trying to reset everything. Then the manager of Matherns, I was over there and uh, I said, what internet service do y'all use? He said, we use the same one for our phones and computer and everything's down. I said, well, that's good news in a way because I know it's not my equipment, but it's bad news if you have to do business on it. I just had to do, you know, trivial things like post photos to alcohol eggs and post two rock and roll songs, which I did right before it failed at 3.55 a.m. Central. Anyway, it was it was down for nearly five hours. All right. <clears throat> we have from 1936. Now, the website says 1946, but it is not. It's 1936. I have definite evidence to prove that. Like newspaper advertisements for ancient age in 1936. 10 star, 90 proof. This is the gold label, which I've never seen in Louisiana. I bought this in Meridian, Mississippi at Bonita Plaza Liquors, right south of Interstate 59, Interstate Slash 20. Age at least 36 months. So that's kind of strange right there because if you look on the website, it says, and I put the website link below, greatbourbons.com, Buffalo Trace brand website, it says that it's aged six years. So there must be a six-year ancient, ancient age, 10-star, and a three-year age. For some reason, Mississippi got the three-year. Either that or the website's incorrect, but I I really don't know the answer. But I know it says 36 months. Here's Larceny, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, very special small batch. 92 proof, and it's a weeded bourbon, as they call it. Weeded bourbon, meaning the second ingredient, grain ingredient is wheat instead of rye. Now, the ancient, ancient age 10 star, if you look at the website, is saying this is a high rye. It says right there, I'll show you. It says this six year old, well, this three year old has flavor to be savored by all bourbon enthusiasts, marked by its sweetness and heavy rye flavor. It's an easy bourbon to sip, taste and notes. Aromas of oak, wood, clover, and honey round out the nose, strong and warm flavors of corn, vanilla, and spice. Finishes with a takeaway of caramel and toffee. <laughs> I'll never remember all of that. And then Larceny, it's and they're showing the awards. They both won awards. It's saying uh, a taste worth stealing. So they're encouraging me to steal it. Thank you, David, for this bottle. He got it for $13, normal price 26. Made with wheat instead of rye as a secondary grain. Our signature wheat of bourbon delivers a smooth taste that's hard to resist. Taste and notes. Aroma, fresh bread and toffee with a note of butterscotch taste. Buttery, caramel, and honeyed notes with a rich mouthfeel. Long, gently sweet, and savory finish. Once again, I'll never remember all of that. L. Larson. Now, I just posted a recorded Dawn Buster. See, I, I did record it at dawn, right at 5.33 a.m. But uh, couldn't go, couldn't go live. No internet connection. But um, I, I figured it'd get restored. Either that, I'd have to buy new equipment, which doesn't look like it's going to have to. This is a heavy bottle. This is some thick glass. Interesting bottle. Let me say that to you. Uh, so I did a recorded video about 16 minutes long. And um, that was a challenge because I thought Virginia Black was going to be so exotic and strange relative to the uh, Larceny that it would be no kind of challenge, but I was surely incorrect. 
Yikes. I poured too much of this larceny, I'll tell you that much. Mm. Dang. Let me try something here. By the sink. <laughs> Sure didn't think it was going to rain like this today. Ooh. Okay, so we'll put that back. I've got most of it back in the bottle. Just lost a couple little drips. Um, yeah, that's more reasonable. More reasonable. Oh, another thing, Ancient Ancient Ages Genuine Sour Mash Bourbon Whiskey. I forgot to put that in my notes, and I'm going to add that to the notes right now. Edit. Sour Mash. Now, that might make a difference in taste, and I think. <clears throat> but going back to that Virginia Black, I thought, oh, man, that thing. I said, that's going to be so exotic, and it's weird in the flavor, and it's only 80 proof. I'll be able to tell them apart one from the other in a snap. Wrong, wrong, wrong. It was a challenge, let me tell you. And I wasn't just clowning around in a 16-minute video because there was no one to talk to. Anyway, okay, they're the same shade. Amber, so I don't have to worry about glancing and seeing a different color because the Virginia black is dark, unusually dark, probably illegitimately dark in the sense that they're probably adding color into it. And they add some strange flavor to it also, to me, like a caramel or, or creme brulee flavor. Why they can't call it bourbon, they call it American whiskey, age two years, but it's really age four, three, and two years. Talking about Virginia Black. It's a blend of four year age, three year age, and two year age bourbons. But you got to go with the youngest age, and the youngest age is two. But it was un it's unusually flavored. It's a unique product. I've never tasted anything quite like it. But in the taste challenge, it was tough. And I had to think and think and think and drink and think and sip and drink and think and all of this. And so then, at the end, I thought, uh, 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 I got it. That's the Virginia Black. And I had it right. But it just goes to show you, you think, oh, people will say, oh, yeah, I could tell them apart. I could tell these apart. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Good. And I'd be proud of you if you could. And that's a remarkable thing. But you got to do the blind taste test to establish if what you're saying is reliable. Okay. People say this about all kind of beer. Oh, I could taste that. I, I'd never confuse Bud Light or whatever they're talking about with this other thing. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't, huh? Just do, it's not hard to do a blind taste test, okay? This is easy. It's it. These are the same color, so I don't have to worry about the color catching my eye and the shade. I took two stickers and I put them at the bottom, piece of paper. I wrote the names. And I taped them to the bottom with the name facing down, so I can't see the name. I've been talking. I mixed them up. I don't remember which is which. I can't even remember the taste of notes for the bourbons I just read. So you say, well, that means you're absent-minded. It's good to be absent-minded in this case. Now, if you play that little where is the baseball under the caps, three caps, and, and every time you win and you never forget and you never lost in your life, well, maybe you'd have to get a partner to help you and mix them up for you because you could just keep track. Of course, most people wouldn't be able to do that because a lot of these guys I, I'm calling out, they, they're, they're, uh, if they're married, their wife is gone and, or she ain't interested in helping do it. She's not going to do it. 
or they're alone, single, and they don't have anybody help. It's there's a way around it. You can work around it. Okay, it's a, there's a workaround. Okay. That's all I'm gonna say, and I'm gonna keep saying. It. I'm not gonna back down off. I'm gonna keep saying it. Don't say that you can. Don't make the big claim that you can tell these things apart. I don't mean these two specific products, unless you're willing to do the blind taste test. I mean, yeah, you could keep saying it, but it doesn't. It doesn't show that it's reliable or we can believe it, because it's just supposition. You're just claiming it. And it could be with any products. It could be peanut butter. You might say, oh, I'll never get Skippy confused with uh, Jif and uh, all these, uh, Peter Pan. No. Do a blind taste test. Let's see. Of course, you want to have all the other variables eliminated. In this case, I do. Same type glasses. Same room temperature. Uh, same amount. Similar proof. 92 to 90. That's an important thing. Um they're both Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Now, if you did something silly like, oh, well, uh, I'm going to do a blind taste test with taste test with weeded bourbon versus gin. Well, I mean, you know, that's not a challenge because you're never going to confuse weeded bourbon with gin. It's like you're not going to confuse yogurt with corn chips. You know, so some of that you got to have some kind of sense to it. it smells very mild. The nose is mild, 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 mild. Stereotypical Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. That's what it smells like. Stereotypical Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. So if you gave that to someone blind and you say, hey, uh, well, they wouldn't have to be blind with their uh, blindfold because they don't know what's in it. You say, hey, uh, what do you think this is? <coughs> I mean, if they smelled it, they would probably just say, I don't smell like some kind of whiskey to me. And that's what it smells like. Regular old bourbon whiskey. Okay. I'm not saying that is a bad thing. It's just what it smells like. All right, let's go over here. Almost no aroma. So right there, there's a difference. This one's got a lot of nose. Same appearance. So appearance tie. Oh, price. Ancient age, about $16 a bottle, maybe 15 Talking about the 10 star. I can get the regular ancient age, 80 proof, for $9.99 at Walmart. $9.49, I think. Larceny is $26. Of course, we got it for, for 13 amazingly. But uh, so 26 and 16 let's say $10. I think it's really more than $10, but let's just say $10. Do I really think the larceny is going to be $10 better? No, I don't. It might be better, but it's not going to be $10 a bottle better. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't see that happening right now. There's aroma here, a little vanilla and wood, but it's faint. Well, wow. That might be the ancient age, but <clears throat> the ancient, ancient age, 10 star. That's a long name. <clears throat> and larceny, it's not just called larceny. It's larceny, very special, small batch. But everybody just calls it larceny. <clears throat> now my throat is dry. Maxwell says, hello, Ron. Cheers. Cheers to you in Russia. He's in the Russian Federation in Moscow, Moscow. All right. Cheers to y'all. strong. It's sweet. It's like corn syrup. Well, you say, well, what do you think it is? It's made out of corn. It's got spicy rye and a lot of wood. And I think it would, it's got to be the ancient age with all this rye. So in, in aroma, I thought it was the larceny, but in the flavor, it tastes like ancient age. Is ancient age a good value? You better believe it's a good value. 
I mean, if you want to pay $26, you get a prettier bottle. The Ancient Age bottle is just a standard Sazerac thing. It's the same bottle design that you're going to get in Benchmark, Ancient Age, uh, Canadian Hunter from Canada. Obviously, Canadian Hunter, same exact bottle. Sazerac likes to use the same bottle for like 10 different products. Heaven Hill does the same thing. But now for Larceny, it's that, now with Larceny, you get a unique heavy glass bottle. And it, it's got a weird way of catching the light. It looks like cut crystal or something. It's, it's nice looking. And it's got a real cork, not just a twist cap. Not just a twist cap. But I ain't paying $10 for that. For those aesthetic... Uh, accoutrements. You gotta remember that sour mash thing. The sour mash whiskey sometimes tastes like a sourdough bagel. Well, this one's pretty spicy too now. That rye will give it like a peppermint taste. Uh, or spearmint, I don't know, really, but uh, I don't know. These aren't that different one from the other that I could tell. And there's no age statement on uh, Larson. So we know it's at least four years old. 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 Least four years old. Least four. We know the ancient age is exactly 36 months because it says on the bottom. It says age at least 36 months, and you know it ain't. Probably three years in a day, and not two days. Just woke up slogging down some coffee. That sounded like a good thing. I drank three cups this morning when I was aggravated like the Dickens. You say, aggravated like the Dickens. Boy, you must have been aggravated. I was because I was trying to do stuff on the internet, and um, I couldn't. But I said, oh, well, too bad for me. At least I wasn't like people that's trying to run businesses where they're the, the whole thing failed. Half the people in this parish probably use uh, my internet provider. And if it crashed, they're trying to run a business. What are they going to do? I mean, I could, I say, oh, oh, I'm so stressed. I can't post my little beer photo on alcohol eggs on Facebook. You know, no big deal. But if you're trying to open a grocery store and you can't get any, make any orders and your phone doesn't work, their phone system went down too, not just the internet. Looking a bit furry again. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it on. I'm gonna trim my beard and cut my hair on the first July first. I always do it the first of the month. Set the razor on number two here. Oh no, number three. Two is too short. Uh, and then do do my hair. You know, four at the top. You know the bangs, easy to do. And then four, three, two, and then at the bottom, number one. Well, you know, it's easy. Just kind of got to kind of feel and make sure you're getting it even. Takes about 30 minutes. Saves time because if I had to go wait, if I go get it cut, I got to wait at least 30 minutes. And then half the time they do it wrong, even though I tell them, like, do it this way. And they'll tell me, especially women, barbers, you know, you don't want it like that. And I'm thinking, is your job to tell me what I want or just do what I'm telling you? I mean, I'm asking, it's a service. I'm saying, if I say cut one side off and leave the other side, you know, one side crew cut, the other side long, just do it. You know, the men, the male barbers, they'll just say, okay, buddy, <laughs> you know, okay, buddy. Your hair, do that every day. You do that every day. All right, so um, <clears throat> the it's too hard if you wait. Now nah, it's easy. My clippers work nice. And it all started with the Coco V. Okay, this one tastes a little softer. It, there's rye spice. Now, don't get confused. Don't confuse yourself. 
You better wreck yourself before you check yourself. You better wreck yourself before you check yourself. You better wreck yourself before you check yourself. You better wreck yourself. Better wreck yourself. Because just because it's a weeded bourbon, don't think it doesn't use rye. It uses rye. They don't say they don't use rye. Why ask why? Don't drink bud rye. It's saying that they're using wheat as number two. Number one, corn, 51% minimum. Number two, wheat. Number three, rye. Number four is probably single malt, single barley malt whiskey in there. Um, but it's a little soft in the mouth. It's a little fluffy in the mouth, a la wheat. Okay, over her. I had a very good stout last night, and I had a thing called nitro. It was really smooth. Oh, yeah, the nitro-infused stout. Was that like left-hand nitro? That's a good one. Then there's Guinness nitro stout, of course. So low alcohol, though, 4.2. It's so very weak, but it's nice. It, the flavor is good, you got to admit. <sighs> Spice. Lots of corn grits. Oh the corn, 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 corn. Man, if you hate corn, bourbon is not gonna be for you. I don't believe it's funny though. Some people that love bourbon, they be bragging about bourbon all the time on the internet, talking about, yeah, I drank some uh uh Pappy Van Winkle, uh 37 year age, only made two bottles. I was given one from my great uncle, um, seventeen hundred dollars a bottle, and um he, uh, he knew Pappy. They used to hang out and everything. You know, these kind of people. And it's like, okay. And they'll talk about, oh, the intricate, you know, pneuma, phenomenon and pneuma, nominon, and all the going into zodiac signs and all of this, talking about the bourbon. And it's like, okay, all right, we get it. You're a connoisseur. But those same exact people, We'll talk about, oh, I'll never drink that beer. It uses corn. Who in the world would ever use corn in a beer? And it's like, well, you just gave us an expose. You just gave us a treatise, a dissertation about this wonderful bourbon, which is mostly corn and how wonderful it is. But yet beer, and you know, when you make whiskey, you got to make beer first. They tell you that at the distillery, they make beer. But they say it's sweet. You can't drink it. Because there's no hops. See, there's no hops in it. There's no hops. You can't drink because you got no hops. You can't drink. So um, so I was like, well, how come corn is evil, but at the same time, it's fabulous? All right. Beer is a grain product. It's made from grains. Bourbon is a grain product. It's made from grains. One is fermented. One is distilled. They're both aged. Beer is lager, you know, if it's a lager, ale may not be aged that long. Ale being top fermented, beer being, uh, lager being bottom fermented, and then the bourbon. But it's like, well, how can it be both ways? Corn is evil, but at the same time, it's luxurious. But it's evil, but it's luxurious. But it's evil. So I don't, I don't get that. But my great uncle didn't hang out with Pappy Van Winkle, so... Um, Okay, I have it, I think, I hope. Corn goes good with barley. I eat bowls of it with real butter and pepper. I love corn. I love corn too. I love corn ever since it fixed the World Series in 1919. I heard you had a little trouble. No, um, I like corn really, honestly, perceptually. Um, do I like beer with corn in it like Bush? Light or bush or Schlitz. I mean, I, it's okay. It's good. I like it. It's fine. It, like, I drink it. Okay. I drink it. Okay. I like natural ice. It's got corn and rice in it. It's got, but it's multi grain. It's a multi grain product. <laughs> it uses barley corn and, and rice. Uh, do I prefer the Reinheitsgebot German beers that are pure with no corn or rice? I do prefer those. I do prefer those. I don't prefer the extremely high price I got to pay for them relative to the, say, natural ice, which is why I drink the natural ice. 
uh, on a regular basis or the natural uh, keystone uh, or the keystone ice, which is an ale, but anyway, but um, you might say, well, you have the money. You can afford the German Reinheitsgebot beers. You, I demand that you buy them all. Well, I would counter, my counterpoint to you would be, well, why don't you buy them all for me and I'll drink them. <laughs> I heard if you consume a lot of corn, it makes you very strong. That must be why I'm extremely strong in my mind. You know, it's fantasy in my mind, you see. Uh, they only like corn when it's cool to like it, laughing out loud, says Ethan. Right. That's spinach. Spinach makes you strong, too. It's a different type of strong. See, corn makes you theoretically strong, whereas spinach makes you actuarially strong. Yes, spinach too. All right, I'm going to say, and all kidding aside, I'm going to say this is the larceny by virtue of it's a little soft body. It's a little soft, a little bit soft, a little bit soft. A little bit soft. I need to speak a little soft. Talk about larceny. Ha 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 ha! I did it! I did it! I did it, I did it. Don't you ever, ever in your wildest dreams, don't you ever question my expertise on telling these apart. Never let yourself be caught doing that. Okay, maybe I'm wrong 38% of the time and I'm only right 72%. I mean to say 62, 62%. <laughs> um, but this is the strategy I've told you about that we're going to adopt. When I'm right, we'll brag about it. When I'm wrong, we'll pretend it never happened. See what I'm saying? See, we're going to, it's going to be like up with people. We're going to be positive and we're going to say, go away you to the negative. Corn and spinach diet is very good. Oh yeah, I read that in uh, Self Magazine, I believe it was. All right, Popeye. All right, hey Ron. Macro says, hey, Ryan, hey, Ron, I went to the liquor store and they have juice, hurricane fruit punch, 10% alcohol, 16 ounce pint cans. I got one and drank it after a hurricane. I'm going to do the same today. That sounds like a pretty um, reasonable line of action, uh, a plan of action, I mean to say, plan of action. Did you ever do Kessler, Ron? I have reviewed Kessler. Uh, unfortunately, I only had a small bottle. I know where to bit. I know where to buy a big one, you know, 1,750 milliliter. I think one day, it'd be years from now, because I have to go around about like the little merry-go-round of blended whiskey. So I have to go around the roulette wheel. And when I get back to Kessler, I'm going to do, I'm going to be fair with it. And I'm going to give it a really proper review, not in a little cheap, try to be a cheap skate bottle. Well, it was actually the only bottle I, I could find at the time. And then, then do a, a, a review and then do the uh, taste challenges. So yes, is Kessler the best American blended whiskey I ever tried? No, it isn't. The best is Seagram Seven Crown. But Kessler is close. Secondly, uh, or thirdly, in a way, it, depending on how you look at it, J uh, Beams 8 Star is right up in there. And that's another uh, Beams product. So Kessler is very good. Seagram 7 Crown is very good American blended whiskey. And, Ke and, and, and Beams 8 Star, which is strange because Be Beams 8 Star got dropped down to only 20% straight bourbon. It used to be um, 25% where like Seagram Seven Crown is still 25% straight bourbon, but whatever the case, um, those are three winners. Now you can get some treacher treachery. They got some treachery out there like uh, T.W. Samuels. Oh, yikes. You say, but it's worse. They got Kentucky Gold. That's way worse than T.W. It is really way worse. Um, now, is there a T.W. Samuels straight bourbon? Yes, there is. I saw it in Pascagoula, Mississippi, but I didn't buy it. I said, well, I got too much. I can't buy everything. Straight bourbon. I'm sure it's fine. I mean, it's fine. I did buy the uh, very old Barton 90 proof. No, 86 proof. Um, 
if you tried to buy every bourbon available, you'd you'd have you'd have to rent a house just to store the bourbon in it. You would have to rent a storage. For, you'd have to rent storage. It's, it's it's not possible. You cannot do it. <coughs> That's it. So I got it right. <clears throat> if I get it wrong, we won't address that. So if I get it wrong, we'll pretend it didn't happen. And if I get it right, we'll make posters about it and public service announcements and we'll tout it. You understand? All right. <clears throat> Looking forward to that re-review. Thank you. You may be on Medicare by the time that happens, but I do plan to do Kessler versus Seagram 7 review. Oh, that'll be a showdown. That would be a major showdown. My money would be on Seagram 7 crown, but could be wrong. Pay-per-view only. It's funny because I could do that and people would probably pay to watch it. Like, you know, you think Secret Seven Crown doesn't have a following. You'd be wrong. It's got a following. They got people love Secret Seven. They'll fight you over that. I mean, I wouldn't. I'd just, somebody ridicule. I'd say, okay, whatever, you know. But um, they got some people. They come home from work. The first thing they reach for is Secret Seven Crown, baby. And, uh, you know, you start talking garbage to them about what they need to drink. And you, know, you might find yourself in a little predicament. I mean, I know you're brave on the internet because you're typing on the internet, you know, you're a big shot. But to go to somebody's house or whatever after work and try to lecture them on why they shouldn't be drinking Secret Seven Crown, mm, that's probably not a good idea. I knew a guy in Reserve, Louisiana. I don't know if he's still alive. Nice guy, really nice. I won't get into the whole story of why I used to go to his house about twice a week, but um, he would work at this refinery. Uh, like a security guard, I think, something like that. But he he said, I've got to go to work. Now, this was his prep for work. He would get the ice bucket, <laughs> get the ice, put it in the rocks glass, and he'd get his Seagram 7 crown and pour it in there, put the cap back, and be drinking that, sitting on the couch, uh, yeah, you know. <clears throat> then he'd finish it, put it down on the counter, say, I'm off to work. That was his prep. You see that guy? He's a nice guy, but I bet you wouldn't go to his house talking about what he needs to drink. Would be a bad idea. Okay, pay per view only. Par Prairie dogging. Be right back. My dad called Secret Seven Crown Jungle Juice. What? Jungle Juice? How dare? How dare? How dare? How dare? All right, that's it. Off to lunch. Y'all take care now. And uh, people in California say, Off to lunch. I just finished breakfast. What is you talking about? And then the people in New York City say, I'm about to go eat my afternoon snack. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. I'm glad I got it right. I got another um, Sazerac Buffalo Trace. Well, not Buffalo Trace. Sazerac coming up next oh, on Thursday. And it is the very not famous, although the label calls it the legendary um, Stedman Select. Stedman Select. The very not legendary Stedman Select. Available at your local Walmart or Total Wine and more. Y'all take care now. YouTube, Beard, Hound, Max Walt, Macro, everybody take care now.